Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Infinity, and this is Magnetize Yourself, where we talk about life, love, spirituality, and of course, the law of attraction. Today, I am going to be doing a collective reading and energy updates for our beautiful collective here on YouTube. If you would like me to channel specific messages for you and your current situation, be sure to like this video and also double check that you are subscribed to this channel. Liking and subscribing are forms of energy transfer. And as a result of this transfer of energy, I'm able to pick up on you and your circumstances more easily. So right away, the first card to come out here is the happy family in the reverse position. This speaks to some kind of a delayed reunion state or reconnection within a love situation. So whoever I'm picking up on here... I feel almost this sense of emptiness or void around this situation because of the uncertainty, the uncertainness or uncertainty. It feels as though there is someone who has been in your life romantically. I'm hearing for many of you for a long time or what seems to be a long time from your human perspective, or this could simply speak to the fact that you have a very strong soul connection with this person. And as I said, soul connection, of course, the contract card came out. So soul contracts, you have some kind of soul contract with this person in love. And that's what's coming up here for you. So I am actually going to pull from the traditional tarot. And I want to ask the traditional tarot, what kind of soul connection does the collective listening here have with this particular person in love? What is this soul contract between these two souls I'm picking up on here? Okay, so this card is the Six of Swords in the upright position. Now, before I channel a bit more from this card, I want to note that it shows on the image on the card a man rowing a boat. It looks like there is a woman and a child in the boat. So I see this representing the masculine and feminine energy. I'm hearing catalyst. So the person coming up here was or is a major catalyst for your spiritual growth expansion and developments. I feel this person triggered some kind of a spiritual awakening within you. I feel that I'm hearing this person say that, and of course they're speaking from a higher self level here. I hear them saying, we decided as souls that we were going to enter each other's lives for the purpose of shaking things up. And I feel that's exactly what happened after meeting this person. It feels as though things were never quite the same. The Six of Swords can also represent a struggle reaching its ends, a relationship moving into calm waters after a difficult period sadness, loss, especially sadness or loss on the part of the feminine involved here. Because on the image on this card, the woman, which we can take to represent the divine feminine, regardless of whether you as a divine feminine listening here are a woman or not, it doesn't matter because these are just energetic labels. But I see the divine feminine here experiencing, and I just got a little bit choked up because of the emotion coming through from the divine feminines I'm tapping into here. There's a lot of grief and loss, but also massive upheaval and change that has occurred through this connection that has ultimately, I feel, transformed you. Now, I want to know, again, from the traditional tarot, 
how this connection has transformed the divine feminine I'm tapping into here. How has this connection transformed the divine feminine here? The cards were kind of slow coming out, indicating that it may be difficult at times to see the positive outcome here. This may be something that your human self, your physical 3D human self is a bit blind to at times. Two of swords in the reverse position. You know, as I flipped over this card, I saw two paths and one was a path of awakening, spiritual expansion, alignment with your soul's highest purpose here on earth. However, this path also brought with it a lot of pain, a lot of struggle, a lot of turmoil and hardship. The other path is a path of the less awakened, and on this path, you never spiritually wake up. You live a relatively secure and stable feeling life, but you always have this vague sense that something is missing. You always feel this sense of emptiness deep within yourself, this slight lack of purpose, but again, in this unawakened pathway I'm seeing, you also don't have to go through the struggle and the hardship. And I see you in a loving, potentially long-term soulmate relationship. It's warm, loving, safe, secure, long-term. But again, there's that vague sense of something missing. And the reason I am speaking to these two paths is because I'm picking up that this is what your soul saw laid out before you prior to incarnating here. And actually, your soul decided to have these two available options presented to it after incarnating here on earth, the path of the awakened soul or the path of the unawakened being. And there was no right or wrong choice here. But if you found this video and you're resonating with this reading, what I'm getting is you already made your choice. You chose the path of awakening. I keep seeing that scene from the matrix with the blue pill and the red pill. And I feel that you chose waking up. You chose aligning with your soul's highest purpose. But this path has also come with a lot of struggle. And for some reason, I keep hearing someone's guide say, you asked for an awakening, whether you realized you were asking or not. I feel there was some moment in your past where you reached out to the divine or you, you cried out at some point within yourself or out into the universe. You may have been communicating with whatever higher power you connect with, whether you call this God, the universe, your higher self, and whether it was with your words or just your vibration, you requested a life of meaning, a life of greatness, a life of purpose. But what I feel your spirit guide saying, and they're almost teasing you a little bit, is you asked for an awakening, so we gave you this catalyst to your awakening. And I feel for many that I'm picking up on here, this so-called catalyst to your awakening, the one that you requested, whether through spoken words or unspoken words, otherwise known as vibration, you asked for a truly magnificent, breathtaking, exhilarating life experience. You were tired of the vague sense of emptiness in your life, of the mediocrity, and so you requested to the universe that you take that other path again. You kind of had these two pathways laid out before you, but the thing about choosing one of these paths is there really is no going back in the sense that now you have awakened, your eyes have been opened, and you can't put yourself back to sleep again. And I feel that at times this does bring about some feelings of frustration. The two of swords reverse can represent being caught between a rock and a hard place, 
Fear, worry, anxiety, or stress may be overwhelming because of indecision, delays, or postponement. And I'm getting that at a higher self level, everything you desire is inevitable for you because you chose this path of awakening, this path of expansion. But at this time, specifically when it comes to both your life purpose, your work here on earth, as well as your connection with this catalyst that entered your life that I will be getting more into later. In these two areas of life specifically, you may feel as though certain things have been delayed. I'm getting the sense like I know exactly what I want, whether it's some kind of dream job, a career, some kind of creation you are bringing into being, whether it's a specific type of relationship, even if you don't know who you want that relationship to be with, I get that you've begun to develop a very clear vision. However, there is this feeling of delay, this feeling of postponement of how is this thing going to come together? So in the extended version of the reading, I will be channeling more information on this catalyst figure coming through in your love life, how this so-called catalyst has impacted your spiritual awakening process. I will be sharing more information from your soul contract with this catalyst that although this came into your life through a form of a love connection, this the effects of what has occurred through this catalytic love connection extends far beyond the area of love and romance. So we will be sharing more on that in the extended reading on Patreon, which is linked in the pinned comments and description box under this video. For those of you interested in hearing those extended messages, but for now, I want to channel more information on these feelings of indecision, postponements, things being delayed. So I'm going to go ahead and reshuffle the cards here. So what does this divine feminine feel has been delayed? Of course, I reshuffle the cards and the contract card comes out again. So you may be finding delays when it comes to fulfilling this soul contract, potentially your soul contract with this catalyst figure that was coming up earlier in the reading, this masculine catalyst for you. I'm getting that the reception of this message will be split. So for some of you listening, you might find resonance with this as being an ending, meaning tying up loose ends with this catalyst or person so that you can both be free and move forward with your lives in a happy, productive way. For others of you though, this is the frustration of knowing that you are supposed to fulfill some kind of mission, purpose, or state of reconnection with this catalyst in this physical lifetime. And for whoever I'm speaking to there, you are feeling your higher self pull you to the outcome on this highest timeline that you and this other soul contracted together, meaning you decided you wanted to to come together. You wanted to fulfill something. For some, I'm hearing this may be starting a family, starting a business, buying a home together, traveling together. There's some kind of vision. I feel that you and this person may have been meant to fulfill together, but the frustration is coming in because... I feel this other person may have been a bit stubborn to fulfilling their end of their soul contracts because of their closed off heart center with heart chakra in the reverse position. I want to know how this person has had a closed heart. How has this masculine not fulfilled their contract by having a closed heart space? community in the upright position, I'm hearing this person's, this masculine's higher self and their guides say that this person's physical human form became a bit too distracted by this physical matrix. Specifically, this person may have been 
raised in an environment where there was financial lack or if not where they were brought up. This could have been financial lack at some point in their life that then caused them to become overly fixated on money. This won't be for everyone. I will be channeling different heart chakra blockages that could be coming up for this masculine catalyst, which when I say catalyst, do keep in mind that this could be really any form of soul connection. For some of you, this absolutely will be a twin flame. For others of you, this will be a soulmate. For others still, it could be a karmic. The key is here, you had a soul contract with this person and included within that soul contract was that you would catalyze each other, you would push each other forward to this massive awakening spiritually, consciously in this life that would realign the both of you with your soul's highest purpose and highest path. But I keep getting that this person has been a lot slower to allow that realignment with their highest path than the divine feminine in this situation. Yeah, the crown chakra in the reverse position. So this person became overly fixated on the physical and lost their way a bit, spiritually speaking, again, because they became a bit too distracted by the physical nature of this planet, whether it was, I'm hearing for some, they may have gotten involved in 3D romantic karmic relationships at a younger age and not allowed these contracts to be fulfilled and dissolved, but remained in them beyond their their intended expiry date so to speak and so they might still find themselves caught up in these karmic relationships and that might be the way in which they are becoming too distracted by the physical nature of the planets and their life for others this may again be money related it might be work related i'm getting also that this person may have developed a bit of a lack mentality specifically when it comes to themselves versus other people they may have a bit of a strong ego based mind in some way because of some wounding in the solar plexus chakra with solar plexus chakra reverse can i get more information on this solar plexus chakra and of course we have the yin yang card in the upright position and this actually came out initially, it looked like it was going to be reversed, but it flipped around to the upright position. So what this tells me is this person's solar plexus chakra wounding, meaning their tendency to over project a kind of, I'm hearing like a pride and arrogance, a kind of ego based mentality being potentially overly competitive with other people seeing others as too separate from themselves because they lost a bit of that spiritual nature that reminds us of the interconnectedness of all people and things. But also I feel this potentially coming from an abandonment wound with walking away reversed. I hear their higher self saying the truth is I'm actually terrified of being lost in life, but specifically for many of them, this is losing you, Divine Feminine. Because the Yin Yang card came out, which is my number one twin flame card in the deck, of course, only you can know whether or not this is a twin flame, but I do see that being a strong indication of twin flame energy or a very, very high vibrational soulmate relationship. But what I also see is that it seems so much hinges on what is happening in the solar plexus chakra center of this connection, meaning, and the heart chakra as well. These two chakra centers, which are bordering on each other, are very much pivotal at this time for how this connection moves forward. The solar plexus connects with our healthy sense of self, our sense of self-worth, self-confidence, our ability to set boundaries from that state of self-confidence, whereas of course the heart chakra connects with our emotions, ability to feel and express our emotions. And I see that both the divine masculine and divine feminine here are working on a lot of healing through these two chakra centers, but specifically balancing them with one another. So I'm hearing that for the, it's of course mirrored, especially if this is a twin flame connection, there is this opposite mirroring happening where I feel the masculine 
had an over-dominant solar plexus energy coming from some kind of an abandonment wound that may have made him act like he didn't care, which is symptomatic of a heart chakra blockage. So he was overcompensating for the weakness of his heart energy, his love energy with an overconfidence and almost what would have come off as pride or arrogance through these solar plexus. But all of this is really stemming deeply from a fear of being lost in life, not belonging anywhere in life, and therefore trying to attach himself to all of these physical 3D things. This may be someone who likes to collect certain things or likes to really hold on to physical objects and things because this allows them to derive some sense of security from these things. For some, this came from an inner child wound with happy family reversed, where they felt as though their environment was constantly changing and somewhat volatile. And so they learned to really place a lot of sense of identity into things that they could carry with them and visually see as a constant when everything else in their life felt in flux. So these would be things like objects. For some reason, I keep seeing a kid holding on to his blanket as a child or like a teddy bear or something. So there's definitely an inner child wound here at play for some of these masculines as well. But for the feminine, I see what is happening is almost the opposite. Just as the masculine has an over-dominant solar plexus chakra energy to compensate for a weakness of being able to fully feel, process, and express his emotions through strong heart chakra energy, the divine feminine here whoever I'm speaking to has a tendency to give her power away to other people. There may be a bit of a victim mentality at play here, a tendency to over give and over self-sacrifice or to shut down and become very overly emotional, wrapped up in her emotions, but incapable at times of moving forward beyond some of those emotional ruts. And these things can be symptomatic of very strong heart chakra energy on the part of the feminine, but a weaker solar plexus chakra. So it's very interesting. You can really see these energy dynamics between the solar plexus and the heart chakra being very much mirrored between the twins that I'm channeling here. I keep say, saying twins and twin flames because I do feel many who connect with this reading will do so as a twin flame, but take it as it connects with you personally. Of course, only you can know whether or not this is a twin flame connection. And I haven't been recommending subliminals through these main reading videos, but my guides keep pushing me to recommend my solar plexus chakra activation and my heart chakra activation, depending on whether you are connecting here as someone who may have weaker solar plexus energy at this time, meaning you may be struggling with self-worth, self-confidence, setting strong boundaries, supporting your goals and dreams with positive forward movement and action, that would indicate that my solar plexus chakra activation would be beneficial to you. Whereas for those of you at the opposite end of the spectrum who may be identifying more with the masculine polarity, at least in this instance, feeling a bit at times overconfident, feeling very attached to the physical, but having difficulty allowing yourself to be soft emotionally, to open yourself emotionally, to feeling and processing things and expressing how you feel clearly and openly through that strong heart chakra energy. And if that is connecting with you, then my heart chakra activation may be helpful for you. And as an overall twin flame balancing tool, if you are a twin flame, I will also leave a link to my twin flame seven chakra energy clearing. I do recommend combining these chakra activations, the solar plexus or the heart chakra with the twin flame energy clearing in a playlist, just listening to both of them once at least in the morning or at night. And this will really result in both strengthening whatever weaker chakra center might be affecting you in this connection at this time, as well as giving you that overall deep level comprehensive energy clearing that the twin flame seven chakra clearing provides. 
So both of these subliminals do come from my subliminal site, soundandsoulful.com. And as you can see on the screen on this website, I have over 100 subliminals for all areas of life. So I have subliminals for physical appearance changes, for mood shifts like confidence, happiness, anxiety relief, for love, relationships, for energy clearing, for manifesting money or business success, for twin flames and so much more and you can try out any subliminal i've created or even create your own custom private playlists by creating a free trial account on my website and again all of that information is linked below but a card just flew out here Okay, so speaking now to a divine feminine who has felt a little bit guarded lately or who the divine masculine here may be perceiving as guarded, maybe you've somewhat stepped back from this catalytic connection in the physical, although I still feel so much energetic level interaction happening between you and this person. But maybe you've decided to set boundaries with this person in the physical to walk away, to step back, or simply to shift your focus more on yourself rather than with man holding a coin reversed on this masculine who is in the process of his own awakening but very much still has a great deal of healing to do. And what I feel your guide saying is you are on the right path in making these choices and decisions, even if you feel a sense of conflict at times, because we do have the temple path in the upright position here as well, representing this alignment with your highest soul's path. Now, I am going to be channeling from the page of pentacles card that came out here as well. So this can represent great loyalty, faithfulness, dedication when it comes to matters of the hearts, a budding romance. And with that word budding, I really get the imagery of planting a seed in the ground and believing, having faith in the growth of that seed as it begins to bud and sprouts until you are capable of seeing it in the physical. But for some divine feminines, this will connect as this very high level soulmate or twin flame catalyst, speaking to the fact that your connection is in process, it is growing, it is transforming, even if that is happening at the energetic level, at this invisible level, trust that that is taking place. For others of you, this will actually speak to new love, to a budding romance that is entering your life or has recently come into your life outside of this connection so take it as it connects but for those of you dealing with a love situation that has come in outside of this connection we have the knight of swords card here so i'm going to channel a bit from this confident and articulate masculine energy who may act impulsively. This is really interesting. So what I'm actually getting from this card for those of you divine feminines who may have someone new who has come into your life. I'm seeing something about the military. So someone here might be in the military or have been in the military, but I'm also feeling this energy of someone who is very persistent when it comes to you. I'm hearing the name Harry for some reason, or the letters H, A, and R for a person. Whoever I'm channeling here, this masculine is someone who is very persistent, who wants to fight for you. If this is still speaking to that previous catalyst connection, this is a preview of what's to come as you continue focusing on yourself. If you do desire to build a long-term relationship with that first person, that catalyst, I see this representing that through you, Divine Feminine, focusing on yourself, you are motivating this person to ignite that fire within them that wants to fight for you and for this connection that will happen over the course of their own awakening. But for those of you dealing with a new person here, I'm getting that this person very much wants to fight for you. They unconsciously may feel themselves in competition against that first masculine energy. Again, for those of you dealing with two masculines here, because they sense this 
very deep level soulmate or twin flame in your energy, but regardless, they are very persistent. They know what they want. There is this energy of kind of like being on a mission, but I feel this person is also potentially very impulsive. This may be the shadow side of the fact that there is someone who very much lives in the present moment. I feel that through this masculine living in the present, they actually have the potential to inspire you, Divine Feminine, to be more present with yourself, with your current life, with your current emotions. And I'm hearing to feel what you're feeling, to emotionally self-reconnect, especially if you are someone who threw with three of swords. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. So for many of you, three people involved here, you divine feminine and these two masculines, again, that won't be for everyone. For some of you, this three people energy could actually be you divine feminine and both the lower and higher self of the same masculine that you're kind of dealing with in both the 3D and the 5D. So take it as it resonates. But for those of you dealing with a new person, I see that you are being guided to resist the temptation to give too much of yourself or your energy, which of course your energy is your currency. It is your value and it is very precious. And I see that although it's beautiful, this person can help you live in the present and may be very good for you. Only you can know that for sure. It's essential that you continue to stand strong in your own power and remain focused on, I just keep hearing preserve your energy in the sense of not over giving your energy away to anyone, including this potential new person in your life, because I see that as you continue refocusing your energy within yourself, divine feminine, you cultivate this magnetism around you. And this is directly related also to the abundance you attract back into your life, whether it's abundance of love, abundance of positive energy, abundance of health, abundance of wealth, or whatever you consider to be success. But again, there is this important message from your spirit guides that this situation requires of you this continual commitment to yourself above all else. Although I do have to say this new person in your life is representing this very strong commitment energy. They seem like someone who wants to settle down with you, but in that way, they again may want to the shadow side of this may be by wanting to settle down with you, you might feel at times as though this person is kind of taking a bit too much of your energy or trying to kind of like tie you down in a sense, like put you in a box and you are on this endless path of expansion. And the overarching lesson you are learning is how to commit to your own expansion above all else, above whether it's this catalyst masculine we channeled first or this secondary masculine coming through now to really focus on cultivating your inner sense of yourself. Again, that solar plexus activation will help with increasing your energy, your sense of self-confidence, keeping you centered and grounded. But I do see the temptation here with this secondary person would be to give over too much of your time and energy and potentially to allow them to become a distraction. Although, of course, only you can know for sure how these messages connect with you. I also see that for some of you, you may find yourselves presented with a choice with all paths lead home. You may feel as though you are trying to choose with three of swords between these two people involved here, but know that the true choice to be made and what your spirit guides want you to know is that true choice is that commitment, as this card says, to your inner authority, to your intuition, to turn your gaze within yourself rather than over giving on the external plane, whether you are choosing to more consciously focus on the catalyst masculine situation or whether there is someone new in your life you're choosing to focus on. At the end of the day, as this card so eloquently states, all paths lead home because whatever path you take, as long as you are standing in your power, as long as you are choosing to mainly focus on your own inner world, on self-reconnecting, on maximizing joy in your daily life, finding a deep sense of 
peace and contentment within yourself, you will find yourself led along the quote unquote right path, whatever choices or decisions you make here. Wow, very, very intense messages coming through. So in the extended version of the reading on Patreon, I will be channeling more into these two potential masculine energies, both the catalyst that I said we were going to discuss as well in the extended. And in addition to that, this potential new person, this knight of swords energy that really wants to fight for you, but maybe a bit impulsive in some way if that is connecting with a certain person in your life we will be channeling more on what this person's thoughts and feelings are and how this situation could move forward moving into the future but for now i am going to reshuffle the cards here and I want to channel a little bit Divine Feminine from your guides and higher self here because your guides keep inserting themselves in this reading. So they seem very talkative through this reading and it seems like they have a lot to say about the situations taking place currently in your life. So what does this Divine Feminine's guides want to say? First, again, just that message of stand in your power. I will also leave a link to the Awakened Divine Feminine subliminal as well for you to explore if you are a Divine Feminine. This is wonderful to add to your playlist because it does really help you to tap into your inner goddess power, so to speak, that natural state of magnetism from which you can really attract whatever you desire from an authentic heart-centered space in life. And so again, the link to that will be under this video also, but speaking about you taking your power back with financial constraints upright, adjacent possibilities, and cornucopia, the 1111 card in the midway position, I'm getting that there may have been some stress or anxiety emerging for someone listening around work, career, or finances recently. And this also could simply speak to someone who is struggling to make a decision when it comes to these areas of life or kind of looking for a new way to do things that will be easier on them physically or mentally and i hear your guide saying choose the path of ease the path of ease is your highest path here that is you stepping into your flow state energy which is an incredibly magnetic state of being you are on this path of learning that your true value and worth does not come from the action or the pressure you apply in the physical but from who you are and what you radiate at a soul level and the more you tap into this truth, the more doors are going to open for you with adjacent possibilities upright. I heard unexpected opportunities are coming your way, especially in regards to work or finances. This may be in connection with someone who wants to collaborate or cooperate with you in some sense. I don't know who I'm speaking to there, but I hope that connects with someone. I'm also seeing a green crystal or stone for someone, but this can also be connected with green aventurine, which resembles financial abundance and stability, as well as connecting with the heart chakra center, which is really beautiful because this speaks to you, Divine Feminine manifesting a great deal of wealth and abundance into your life but doing so from a space of authenticity doing something that really lights you up and in fact your guides are urging you to focus as much time attention and energy as you can manage at this time on things that cause you to feel illuminated lit up excited for life because that feeling of exhilaration is a sign you are on the right path is a sign that you are developing that very magnetic energy that will draw back to you everything that you desire i'm also getting that on this path when it comes to your life purpose specifically whatever this is for you it may be requiring you at this time to show more of your authentic self than you have in the past to be i'm hearing to be vulnerable through your art so this could be through singing through music or art in a more abstract sense the art of business, of work, you might be required to apply more of that heart-centered kind of energy to something more monetary or financial or business-related. 
And I'm hearing this is where your true power lies. You were taught when you were younger that your ability to feel so deeply was some type of a curse because people around you may have led you to feel guilty for feeling so much, for feeling everything, for feeling very emotional, for absorbing other people's energies. But now you are learning that it was never a curse to be able to feel so deeply that that actually spoke to a profound heart chakra energy that you naturally carried that is now being transmuted into those markers of what you consider to be physical success and abundance. You are in the process of manifesting so much into your life right now. I see that with cornucopia in the midway position. Cultivate a deep sense of inner peace within yourself as well, especially nourishing the sacral chakra at this time. Also, I do see, for some reason, I see someone drinking tea, allowing themselves to really take time to meditate in the morning, to do breath work, to to tap into their inspired flow state energy through listening to inspirational material or through reading inspirational books, doing something that allows you to really tap into that womb space, that powerhouse of creativity within you as a divine feminine being. And specifically coming into deeper levels of peace within yourself because the abundance coming to you, what you are planting, this future you are creating and setting into motion is not going to be the way of the world. It's not going to be the way that most people manifest success and abundance through through pushing, through chasing, through that kind of karmically based energy with women holding a coin up rights. It's going to be through heart-centered energy, through radiating your authenticity, which is your true value and worth, through ease, through finding deep peace and contentment within yourself, cultivating your creative inner energy, and then moving forward into inspired, aligned action with the action card uprights. Wow. Very beautiful messages from your guides coming through here. Now in the extended version of the reading, I will be channeling messages from the higher self of the divine feminine and the higher self of the divine masculine to one another. And those extended messages will specifically be more love related. So the link to the extended reading, of course, is in the pinned comments and description. But I do want to close out this reading here by just sharing one final message, what you need to know most at this time, what you can carry within your heart and soul moving forward into the weekend. And this is the all-encompassing hands, the number 20 card, by the way, the number 20 might be significant to someone. And I'm going to be reading from the Rumi Oracle guidebook. You are the essence of my existence. Who am I? A mirror in your hands. Whatever you do, I will do. I am your irresistible reflection. With every breath, I feel my heart is beating with yours. In your joy, I am exuberance. In your sadness, I am in sorrow. If you are bitter, I become bitter. My joy is when I become bewildered in your beauty and taste the sweetness of love on your lips. If I pick a rose without you, it becomes a thorn in my hands. If I am the thorn, I become the rose in your hands, Rumi. And the guidebook also says, Perhaps you are in need of reassurance, dearest one. Perhaps you have been feeling somewhat alone on your path or struggling with a matter deep within your precious, beautiful heart and speaking of it to no one. Such loneliness that can foster in the hearts with no other to bear witness to your life experience. You may question your life, your sanity, your truths, and create doubt where no doubt need be. This must stop now. You are worthy of so much more, and this suffering is not essential for your growth now. So this oracle comes to you as the hand of the divine. It is the all-encompassing hand, the hand that has no limitation upon the blessings it can bestow. Allow that divine hand to reach for you, beloved. Do not turn it away. Do not let old shame, guilt, or mistaken notions of false independence keep you from accepting this heavenly hands. 
it will deftly unravel the ties that have bound your own hands, preventing you from fully giving and receiving according to your worth, which is incontestable and without limit. Thank you so much to all of you beautiful co-creators here. We really are all co-creating these messages, readings, and videos. So I am so appreciative for each and every one of you here. If I do resonate with you in some way, I invite you to subscribe and join our beautiful community of like-minded, conscious, creative beings here on YouTube links to the extended reading on Patreon, as well as the subliminal meditations recommended through this reading, which are through my website, soundandsoulful.com. All of that information is under this video in the pinned comments and description box. I would also love if you could connect with me on Instagram at magnetizeyourself. Otherwise, I am wishing you a beautiful, magical rest of your day and weekend, and I will talk to you again in Monday's reading.